Welcome to the SheCode Africa Screenshot Updates project meeting. It's 25 April. Uh, topics that I had on the list while we're waiting for our participants to arrive, Aditya and I were going to discuss um, automation ideas for, uh, for screenshot updates and, and talk through different, different concepts and things. This is not the focus of the SheCode Africa project at all, but it, it might align with it. Uh, we're going to identify it aligns with it because we're identifying screenshots in this project. And aligns because we are updating the screenshots interactively. So we'll have to go through steps to reach the point where we can take the screenshot. So Aditya, here's, here's some conceptual model for me, which was, okay, the, the documentation includes a screenshot, right? That is preceded by some, some words explaining the screenshot or its contact. And, and that you'd expect that. Uh, that's that's how we do screenshots. However, what it that those words are not precise enough to tell a computer how to do it. To how to okay. how to duplicate that. They and they can't be. They naturally cannot be because we write for human beings. We write for human beings, not for, we write for people, not for machines, right? The documentation's purpose is not to satisfy a machine, it's to satisfy a, a person. So then the question is, how do we represent, how would we represent those steps, the machine executable steps, to, to reach the screenshot, right? And, and there are some additional questions like, how would we express that a portion of the screen is needed, not the whole screen? Because in many of the examples in the screenshot sheet, we can see, let's, let's jump to one and take a look at it. So here, it says that the help icons have changed. So when I open that page, we're going to see, okay, this one is the whole screen. So that one, mechanically, I could see how we could grab it. These individual pictures of the help icons are not the whole page. So they are, they are something different. And in fact, they might be better let's let's phrase this as another way some screenshots aren't screenshots at all some screenshots a few of the screenshots are images in the jenkins source code like the blue ocean status images Right, so maybe those we just say, hey, that's not a screenshot at all. It should just extract the image from the Jenkins source code that is used for partially sunny, that's used for cloudy. Whatever that image is should be, should be embedded here. Um, and actually, these may be up to date. I'll have to look to be sure. But so so that's the that's the idea. Then is okay. How do we how do we get that information into an auto, into a machine into an automation system now back to the first question how would we represent machine executable steps so python's pydoc facility invites 
developers to write tests in the documentation. And, and they do that by, by expressing the steps in a machine readable format. And it's a relatively precise machine readable format. So that's one alternative. Another might be behavioral behavior driven development. Uses a encourages the creation of creation of a domain specific language. dedicated to the specific task, the specific product being tested and the tasks in that product. So it might be things like, let's see, let's, let's grab an example. And we could probably, since Jenkins is Java, we could use here we go. Let's let's take a look at an example right here we go. This one is a lot of fun because it shows exactly how to do. Here is the here is the description that they use to describe precisely. Oh, thank you very much for the ad. Describe precisely how to how to how to prepare for and execute this this test so that it's written in English English language. Adding an item to order, I want to be able to add an item to a current order. Scenario describes what we're going to do before we start the test. I have not yet ordered anything as a pre precondition. Then I go to the burgers category, select a cheeseburger, have a new order, and the order has one item in it. So. This is described, and then it gives data that's used to describe it. So there's a category in the category sandwiches. I have the item, a chicken sandwich, price $9. And now we see as they take us through it, how that, how that gets implemented. And, and they really are creating a, te a testing description language which I think could also be a screenshot description language in this case, is one idea of how this kind of thing has been done. Now, Aditya, I've been talking a lot. Does any of this resonate for you or give you a sense of ways we might approach it? Uh, yes, Mark, definitely. So I was not aware of the PyDoc thing. So I'll look into it. I have done some uh, behavioral de uh, development we did in the past and I've familiar with cucumber what exactly what you showed right so oh, good yeah so uh, that's something i'm familiar with and i never thought that it would it could be used for something like this so that's some, a new way to look at it and uh, yeah that's something again i'll uh, definitely look into when you talked about screenshot automation the first thing that came to my mind was actually uh, those end to end to end testing libraries in the front end that we have so in front end, like if you want to test your login page, for example, uh, it would just spin up an instance. It will actually type in the login. It will, uh, you know, automatically type in the login credentials, hit the login button. It will actually happen that way. Right? So uh, I thought if we have a part to actually go to the page where the screenshot is in the Jenkins uh, um, deployment, we can actually write an end-to-end -end, uh, test, like an interactive test, as you are mentioning that actually does that and there there we can have that in in and this is something hypothetical i'm not sure how will you capture a particular section of the screen taking the whole screen is an easy task as you mentioned taking screenshot of the whole screen but yeah we'll have to see how we can do a section of the screen and then that can be uh, basically will be the updated screenshot and we can just update it so that's one thing that uh, i thought of Good. Uh, i have I've used uh, Cypress and all the open source tools that are there, cypress.io in the mm -hmm. past. And I think we can 
give it a try as well how how easy or difficult or would it be to write something yeah and cypress.io is an example of of end to end test automation right with a web browser is that correct i'm not experienced yes. with cypress i'm yes. i'm i <laughs> had used selenium once in the past selenium and Cypress is conceptually something similar, right? Where it's it's actually driving a web browser, and while driving the word, the web browser, um, I, I know at least Selenium has the facility to take a picture at the end to show people what something failed as. So I think it's that kind of thing. Uh, yes, Mark, you got it. That's okay. Good. Now the, there was another one that I had heard of called Zikuli. That is, it is, is, if I remember correctly, is an, a test framework that actually compares screenshots. So it's, it clearly must be taking screenshots because it's comparing them. Uh, it's it's a, a yet another way of considering that same thing. I think, let me look to be sure. Is it, did I spell it correctly? Test automation. Web test automation tooling. Nope. I thought, oh, oh, I spelled it wrong. Okay. Spelled with an S, not an S. Z. Sikuli. No. Ah, yes. Yeah, Sikuli. Here it is. Okay. Sikuli is, a, is the same kind of thing, only it. It uses very much, if I understand correctly, it absolutely uses pictures and it compares images. So it's asserting the context contents of images. So it's quite different from Cypress where they're, I think they're inserting, asserting things inside the browser, right? right? Yeah. They're, they're asserting is the DOM correct? And it DOM, is the, yeah. is the, is the, the object model inside the browser correct? And, and that has all sorts of strengths and power to it. Good, okay. And then, yeah, certainly Selenium and, uh, oh, there was a behavior driven thing around that. Oh, oh, Ruby, what is it called? The Ruby version, there's a Ruby thing that does uh, Brian Merrick did it. Just a minute. It's been a long time. Brian Merrick. A Ruby web test automation. I don't remember the name of it. Um, Is it Sahi? S-A-H-I? I uh, hadn't heard of that one. Uh, Rails. Hmm. Hang on, Ruby, Ruby web testing framework. I should remember this, Aditya. I apologize that I don't. That's really kind of sad. Not copy by, oh, water. That's the one that I had seen before. Okay, so water. Um, And you said Sahi or Sati? Ha, it's Sahi, S A H I. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't used it. It's just something that came up in a website sometime back. Ah, okay. All right. So, so it's uh, Sahi is another is test automation for for desktop apps. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, probably not something that we'll end up using. Well, I, again, it, it does play back on browsers. And so that, that mm -hmm. could let us capture the screenshots. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so those were the things that were on my mind as possibles. I'm sure that Gavin Mogan has other ideas and, and his, he's certainly got a lot more experience in this area than I do. But, but for me, the, 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 the question of approach, how do, we ex, how do we represent 
the machine executable steps is the is the bigger challenge, right? It if we represented them as as you said as interactive test automation, that gives us interactive tests that are now regular being run and could be used in more places than just documentation generation, right? So the benefit okay. of that technique usable in other locations, not just test automation, not, or not just screenshot automation. There's a, there's this, uh, the acceptance test harness for Jenkins that does something like this, but I don't think it's using any of those frameworks. Just a minute, let's take a look at it. Because it might be that we could conceivably, yeah, okay, so it does it using Selenium, right? Let's see, where is it? End-to-end -end test suite for Jenkins automation server and plugins. Tests controlling Jenkins under test through the UI and REST APIs. So it has the benefit that it knows about Jenkins REST APIs, and some of those REST APIs could be much more helpful to do initial configuration than trying to drive through a web browser. You know, if we need if we need certain objects created, it's probably much faster and easier and more reliable to do them through a REST API than it is through a web browser. So, so let me put a link to this one. And where is it that it says it uses Selenium? I just, oh yes, here it is. So this might be another, another approach where we say, hey, we wanna oh, get yes. two gains from this is we'll get a few more tests for the acceptance test harness. And these things happen also as a side effect to generate screenshots that we can use. And now I don't see any mention here of, oh, debugging tests in a container. Does it, and it, I think it may. No, it doesn't show us how to grab. Oh, it shows how to run the debugger. So you don't have to have to be, and, and it assumes you're looking at Firefox locally. So it's not attempting to grab you a, a screenshot from somewhere else. Let me make a note of that. Okay, so Jenkins acceptance harness uses Selenium. For end to end testing. So, so for me that might lobby that we should consider Selenium, if only because we've got people who have created a significant body of tests in Jenkins acceptance test harness. And if you look at the, at the source code, the tests, there's quite a collection of tests. All right, so let's see, for instance, well, what have we got here? Maybe the best yeah. thing to do. Acceptance test oh no there aren't a lot here i thought we had a bunch that were being run by 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 others maybe i'm there on a different branch or i need to have a conversation with people to be sure i understand but it's for me acceptance test harness might be a place that we would consider hey might be an effective way to do it because it already exists and we've got people with skills and it's using selenium as a known technology yeah, I agree with on that part. Selenium has a community support, right? Right. All right. So those were those were the kinds of ideas I had. Anything else you wanted to add before we close our meeting, Aditya? Nothing else that comes to mind right now, Mark, but <clears throat> Yeah, I'll go through these and probably we can have another discussion next time. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for being here today. I'll save a, a copy of this recording so that it's available. And, uh, and 
get all the other recordings uploaded that I'm supposed to have uploaded. Thanks again, Aditya. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.